All right, thanks everybody. So in terms of topics that I think we could address, we could, we could talk about plugin development, what it means to do some of the specific items that we've listed. We could talk about pipeline development. We could talk about, we could go back to the adopting a, adopting a plugin. I think we're, we're, we're pretty well covered there. We could take topics of your choosing. Are there specific topics you'd like to, like to consider? Yeah. Um, sorry, I just missed it. I have a question about plugin development. I'm trying to find when I'm searching through the, the Jenkins website and everything else, I keep on running into plugin documentation links that are all set to read only and like normally three or four years old. So where is the current documentation for plugin development? So I'm assuming I'm just looking in the wrong place, but no, no, you're, it's, it's a broad mix. There is plenty of documentation that is useful, even in the, the, the read-only wiki site. However, the best and most authoritative is on Jenkins, on www.jenkins.io. Okay. And let me, let's go there. Let me share my screen and we can look at it together. But, but this may not address your specific question, but let's try. So here, I'm going to go to this. Let's see, do you, do you see my screen yep. with the slides on it? Okay, so let's look at, at Jenkins.io. And so here is the, and let me see that I got it. Okay, sized it correctly from my screen. So documentation. And now if we look at the developer guide down here at the second from the bottom, what this gives us is a, a is links to various things. All right, the first, how do you get started writing a new plugin? That's that's actually rather uncommon now with 1,800 plugins. Most people don't need to write a new plugin, but if you're interested, we could go through that. Then there are a series of how-to guides that guide us on specific okay. specific needs and specific challenges. Jonathan, was was there a I specific? I don't, I, I, I don't end up, when I'm searching through like DuckDuckGo or Google, I don't end up here. I end up. And, and that's, that I suspect is because many of the questions are answered on the wiki. Yeah. And hang on just a minute. I've got okay. something. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are, there are plenty of, of, things that are linked to the Jenkins Wiki. And because of the links to the Jenkins Wiki, maybe we could test this one specifically. Is there a certain question that you've got a little more specific? And let's look for it together here. Um, no, well, just, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't want to monopolize things, but um, no, I, I, like I said, I, when I was trying to, when I migrated our at work when I migrated the Jenkins instance to the newer LTS. Mm -hmm. And then I um, tried to bring in that old plugin that I was using. It just, it threw errors. And so then I just opened up, I had the old source to the plugin and I opened it up and sort of tried to update the palm. And then also it was throwing errors all over the place. And then I went to look to try to solve those errors. Um, it was missing, the, some of the groovy parts of it were missing um, some cross-site scripting fixes and a bunch of other stuff and, and I just kept on when I as I was searching for the issues I ended up on the wiki and um, I was finding sort of old stuff you know pointing to like NetBeans plugins that are no longer available and and pointing to IntelliJ plugins that are like right state and stuff and so I was just trying to figure out where the kind of yeah so yeah, anyway. well, and 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 you highlight you highlight a there's a there's a broad collection of information on wiki.jenkins.io. I yeah. think the specific thing, probably the first thing you were doing or would have benefited by doing, is this yeah. updating your Maven parent palm. 
Yeah. Because what that does is that, and if you're willing, we could actually, we could actually try this live if you'd like, but, but what there is here oh. is this guides us to, to, Hey, how do I, how do I take my older plugin that was probably using this kind of format yeah. and get it into this format and adapt to the new, okay. new, new Jenkins parent palm. Yeah. I figured that stuff out eventually. So, but yeah. So I don't, like I said, I don't want to take up unless other people will find this useful. I don't want to sort of monopolize things, but. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, for me, it's worth, I think it's worthwhile highlighting some of the things okay. on this page just for everyone's benefit, because when you adopt a plugin, one of the early things that you'll probably do is exactly this update your Maven parent palm. And okay. the steps that this provides are necessary preparatory steps for some of the later steps, like using the Jenkins bill of materials. So, so by, by saying, okay, we're going to do updating your Maven parent palm, this change, okay, it looks pretty simple, right? We're going to change the parent from being without specifying a version to instead now specify a version include the relative path markup and set a separate property for the Jenkins dot version. That exercise alone will now update you. And now here you should probably then, most of us should look at that version number and say 1.625 is very, very old. And, and now there's a, a little bit of extra guidance choosing, let's see, it's, if I look at it this way, Here it is. This, so you, you, you remember I said, hey, 1.625 is old. There's a, a page in this set that says choosing a Jenkins version to build against. And, and Jonathan, one of yours is you are updating to a Jenkins LTS version and you're probably not going to do anything with that old plugin on an old Jenkins version. So for you, updating to a new Jenkins version is probably a good thing. Yeah. And so this guidance says, okay, gives us some instructions on how do we choose what Jenkins version we should make as the minimum value for this Jenkins dot version. Yeah. And then it, it gives you some trade-offs. Okay. If you choose to keep it low, you can increase your adoption. If you go make it much, much more recent, you can use more recent features you should generally not use something that's older than about a year because things that are older than a year have sort of fallen off the edge of the update center. And so, so when it says, when this one says 1.625 and you go looking in the history and realize, wow, that was eight or nine years ago, you can clearly make a move to a newer version and you can choose a much more recent version saying, okay, I'm going to choose and now we look, what does it recommend? And this page says, okay, choose either 2.263.1 or 2.277.1. And the cool thing for me about this page is it updates automatically based on LTS versions. So it's going to six months from now, show us different versions as the recommended base version. So update your parent palm, good first thing. Now, now you may say, oh, oh, uh oh, you do that and you get this message. Oh, I'm getting require upper bounds messages. And these are the kinds of messages that happen. And guess what? This is a great excuse to then look at, oh, maybe I should switch to use the Jenkins bill of plugin bill of materials as referenced here because what it will do is solve most of those, many of those kind of problems for you. So you don't have to solve them anymore because what this bill of materials concept is, is there's a repository in Jenkins that has a bunch of automated tests that test all sorts of plugins in combination with each other at version numbers, and then records those version numbers in this thing and all you do is use the results of other people's testing to decide what version you want to base yourself on for a particular dependency. So the, now I, I fear this was such a novel concept for me that it, it took me 
a little bit to think about it. Do you have questions about how, how those dependency version numbers are managed or things like that? No, I have to play with it a bit first. You know, okay. So, so this is that, okay, update your, as you choose a Jenkins version, you can update to use the plugin bill of materials okay. and the plugin bill of materials will simplify dramatically your management of version numbers of dependencies. Okay. And, and I, I, cannot, I cannot praise this nearly enough because in the example of the plugins that I maintain, even some of the low volume plugins, it has been a dramatic improvement in the simplicity of these POM files by being able to use the bill of materials instead of calling out every single version number of every single dependency. Okay. Great. I, I had a question, Mark. Yes, please. So uh, what level of autonomy have the plugins in regard to dependency? Like for instance, uh, I beg Apache HTTP client. It is very common or is very used across multiple plugins. So if, I, if the plugin that I'm using, it depends on that uh, particular library, it, it, I can upgrade it just for my plugin or it have uh, an impact on remaining plugins. How?